Story, The History of Cataclysms by Chan Thomas. Two, dear wife, without her help and faith, through the years of sleepless nights and seemingly endless trials of study, research, translation, and travel, this book never would have come into being. Two, General Hall Grant and his wonderful family, to General LeMay and Admiral Taylor, to the joint staff of that time, for their inspiring encouragement without which this book might not exist. To all those who ridiculed, scorned, and laughed, relegating me to the nuthouse and even firing me. For how else would I have been so driven to pursue, solve, find, and derive the truth I owe them? Chapter 1. The Next Cataclysm With a rumble so low as to be inaudible, growing, throbbing, then fuming, into a thundering roar, the earthquake starts. Only, it's not like any earthquake in recorded history. In California, the mountains shake like ferns in a breeze. The mighty Pacific rears back and piles up into a mountain of seawater more than two miles high, then starts to race eastward. With the force of a thousand armies, the wind attacks, ripping, shredding, everything in its supersonic bombardment. The unbelievable mountain of Pacific seawater follows the wind eastward, burying Los Angeles and San Francisco as if they were but grains of sand. Nothing but nothing stops the relentless, overwhelming onslaught of wind and ocean. Across the continent, the thousand mile per hour wind breaks, wreaks hell. <laughs> it, it's unholy vengeance everywhere, mercilessly, unceasingly. Every living thing is ripped into shreds like being blown across the countryside. And earthquakes leave no place untouched. In many places, the earth's molten sublayer breaks through and spreads a sea of white-hot liquid fire to add to the holocaust. Within three hours, the fantastic wall of seawater moves across the continent, bearing the wind-ravaged land under two miles of seething water coast to coast. In a fraction of a day, all vestiges of civilization are gone, and the great cities, Los Angeles, San Francisco, Chicago, Dallas, New York, Boston, are nothing but legends. Barely a stone is left where millions walked just a few hours before. A few lucky ones who managed to find shelter from the screaming wind on the lee side of a high mountain peak, such as Mount Massive, watch the sea of molten fire breathing through the quaking valleys below, the raging waters follow at supersonic, speed, supersonic speeds, piling higher and higher, steaming over the molten earth fire and ringing and rising almost to their feet. Only great high mountains such as this one can withstand the cataclysmic onslaught. North America is not alone in her death throes. Central America suffers the same canocide, cannonade, wind, earth fire, and inundation. South America finds the Andes not high enough to stop the cataclysmic violence pounded out by nature in her berserk rage. In less than a day, Ecuador, Peru, the West and Western Brazil are shaken madly by the devastating earthquake. The Andes are piled higher and higher by the Pacific's supersonic onslaught as it surges over itself against the mountains. The entire continent is burned by molten earth fire, buried under cubic miles of catastrophically violent seas, then turned into a frozen hell. Everything freezes. Man, beast, plant, and mud are all rock hard in less than four hours. Europe cannot escape the onslaught. The raging Atlantic piles higher and higher on itself, following the screeching wind eastward. The Alps, Pyrenees, Urals, and Scandinavian mountains are shaken, then heaved even higher when the wall of seawater strikes. Western Africa and the sands of the Sahara vanish in nature's wrath, under savage attack by wind and ocean. The area bound by Zahir, South Africa and Kenya suffers only severe earthquakes and winds, little inundation. Survivors there marvel at the sun, standing still in the sky for nearly half a day. Eastern Siberia and the Orient suffer a strange fate indeed, as though a giant subterranean seath sweeps away the Earth's foundations. Accompanied by the wind and its screaming symphony of supersonic death and destruction, 
as the Arctic Basin leaves its polar home, Eastern Siberia, Manchuria, China, and Burma are subjected to the same inhalation, and South America, wind, earth, fire, inundation, and freezing. Jungle animals are shredded to ribbons by the wind, piled into mountains of flesh and bone, and buried under avalanches of homogenized seawater and mud. Then comes the sudden, seemingly infinite supply of terrible, insanely, instantly paralyzing temperature, instantly paralyzing temperature drop of 180 degrees Fahrenheit. Not man, beast, plant, muck, earth, nor water is left unfrozen in the entire eastern Asian continent, most of which remains below sea level. Antarctica and Greenland, with their ice caps, now rotate around the Earth in the torrid zone, and the fury of wind and inundation marches on for six days. During the sixth day, the oceans start to settle in their new homes, running off the high grounds. On the seventh day, the horrendous rampage is over. The Arctic Ice Age is ended, and a new Stone Age begins. The oceans, the great homogeneous homogeneizers have laid down another deep layer of mud over the existing strata in the Great Plains as exposed in the Grand Canyon, Painted Desert, Monument Valley, and the Badlands. The Bay of Bengal Basin, just east of India, is now at the North Pole. The Pacific Ocean, just west of Peru, is at the South Pole. Greenland and, and, and Antarctica, now rotating equatorially, find their ice caps dissolving madly in the tropical heat. Massive walls of water and ice surge towards the oceans, taking everything from the mountains to the plains in gushing, heaving paths while creating immense seasonal moraines. In less than 25 years, the ice caps are gone, and the oceans around the world rise over 200 feet with the newfound water. The torrid zone will be shrouded in a fog for generations from the enormous amounts of moisture poured into the atmosphere by the melting ice caps. New ice caps begin to form in the new polar areas. Greenland and Antarctica emerge with verdant tropical foliage. Australia is the new unexplored continent in the north temperate zone, with only a few handfuls of survivors populating its vastness. New York lies at the bottom of the Atlantic, shattered, melted by earth fire, and covered by unbelievable amounts of mud. Of San Francisco, Los Angeles, Chicago, Dallas, Boston, not a trace is left. They all will join the legends of the seven cities of Kabola. What's left of Egypt emerges from its Mediterranean inundated new and higher. Still, the land of the ages, the commonplace of our time becomes the mysterious bellback of the new era. A new era, yes, the cataclysm has done its work well. The greatest population regulator of all does once more for man what he refuses to do for himself and the planet on which he lives, and drives the pitiful few who survive into a new stone age. After the cataclysm, we join Noah, Adam and Eve, Atlantis, Mu, and the Olympus. The Jesus joins, oh, and Jesus joins Osiris, Teora, Zeus, and Vishnu.